What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're going to be covering the SRL league races that have been taking part over the last three weeks, uh, maybe two weeks. Um, I've actually just edited uh, the last three races. I was going to combine them all into one video but um, the final race ended up being a lot longer than what I was anticipating it to be so we're going to have SRL USA and SRL Mexico in this one. And then in a day or two's time, we'll have uh, Brazil going live in a very short amount of time. So, uh, yeah, as you can tell by the title, and as you can tell probably by guessing, by the fact that we're combining races, some serious crap does go down in one of these races. So, be prepared for that. But uh, in this race here in USA, we had a, a weird occurring of the weather forecast. It was... Um, in that really weird transitional phase between the inters and the dries being the exact same pace uh, relative to each other. Um, I went down the path of the ultra soft tyres trying to get a dry time in as early as possible. Whereas Ryan and Warden, they went down the mentality of oh, the track is only going to get wetter. The dries might only be faster for the first minute or so. So we'll just go out on the inters and get the ideal running as soon as we can uh, with the inters and try and get the most ideal time in. But it didn't in fact go that way. The I feel like, in my opinion, the ultra soft tyres were faster than the intermediate tyres from the outset. I just didn't nail a lap, whereas Warden put in a really solid one. We come across the line and we go fastest with a 148.1, which was a, a pretty solid time. We move on to the next lap and uh, you can see we're up by three tenths. This is actually our third flying lap here that we're attempting. We come to uh, the second sector hairpin and massive lock up there. We're up by five tenths and then we throw it all away by just pinching the inside front brakes there. So that was the end of that lap. Unfortunately, we weren't fueled up enough to do another lap. And as well with the timing, two and a half minutes left to go in the session. There wasn't enough time for me to go back in the pits and then go out again on a set of ultra soft tires. I feel like the session was actually starting to get faster as well towards the end of the session. Warden and Ryan reacted to my times, put on the dry tyres, and as you can see here, Warden goes fastest with a 1 minute 47.1, and I, yeah, wasn't able to to, to react, I wasn't able to, to respond and uh, go faster, which I definitely feel like I could have, I could have matched or even beaten Warden's time. This is Ryan going on, on the super soft tyres, makes a mistake at turn 1, would have been a really good lap for him as well because the supers should in theory actually work better than the ultra soft tyres because they have a better working range. And Ryan was pretty frustrated, did some burnouts, and he will start from P4 on, or P5 on the grid, uh, three and a half seconds away. So, yeah, it's an interesting grid we have for this race um, because uh, New Zealand Ryan uh, qualified on the inters, he can start on whatever tyres he wants, and I believe he is on the super soft tyres for the start of this race. And away we go. Uh, it was a pretty neutral start for us there. We had a little look up the inside of Warden in the turn one. Um, I knew that I kind of made a mistake with the way that I dealt with qualifying uh, because I did three flying laps on these ultra soft tyres. It meant that by the time we got to the race, there was just no, there was no purchase in the tyres. There was nothing really left to offer, and I just didn't have the pace versus the front guys. New Zealand Ryan goes up the inside. I, you know, I knew he was faster, I didn't want to fight that, I wanted to just run essentially the fastest race I could, stay with him, and then we'll fight back to, to live another day in the second stint, potentially. So, this first stint here was a massive struggle, the tyres were just not up to pace, I leaked the best part of three or four seconds to Warden in that opening stint, just really trying to eke out the tyres as long as I could. The tyres are really bad for tyre wear, but I managed to stretch it out to the point where uh, myself and Warden it on the exact same lap, so that was the, where the main deficit of the race was was lost for me. Um, from there on in, I was pretty much matching, or if not, maybe slightly slower than Warden and especially New Zealand Ryan, who pits uh, a few laps later, and um, Ryan and Warden battled for the rest of the race, exchanging positions here and there, and uh, we ended up finishing in P3, uh, some four and a half seconds. Uh, away there. So, you know, in general, we didn't really have the pace there. Um, the fastest lap times show that maybe we did. We were only a tenth away or half a tenth away from New Zealand Ryan's fastest lap of the race. 
which I was quite surprised about. I personally feel like I didn't have the pace to run with those guys, but um, yeah, we lost all of our margin at the start of that race, uh, having to stretch out the tyres. But you know, that's how it goes. I, I didn't have the pace, and um, I'll happily take P3. We move on now to Mexico, and I can't remember how I was feeling heading into this race. I feel like maybe I didn't do any practice or I was very busy or something was going on. So I, um, yeah, was just not quite on the pace, uh, at least in this opening qualifying session and it was P4. But away we go for the Mexican Grand Prix. Um, fairly even start. We've got Master Berserk alongside us. Both the Renaults leading the way in one and two, which hopefully uh, we can get involved with and, you know, challenge them in this race. We go really deep into turn one. Lose our front wing on New Zealand Ryan, and straight away we throw the race down the pan. Yeah, I couldn't believe that because I, I thought I could, you know, go really late around the outside. I thought Ryan was going to do the same thing as well, um, and I just overset the marks there. I think it's green or yellow front wing damage. We'll have to come into the pits at the end of this lap. You can see Ginger Horizon getting quite feisty there with Master Berserk. Uh, Neon True Dome comes from a long way back to die mob me in that corner. He doesn't even get alongside my B pillar and uh, he spins himself out there. He actually sent me to the stewards for that. He dive bombs me and I get the stewards inquiry. I could not believe that. Um, I don't even know if I got a penalty or not. Um, never checked. People wanted to see my footage about that. You know, I couldn't be bothered because that was just stupid. But anyway, uh, we put on the Zubisoft tyres, um, blasted away, setting in fastest laps. I was actually really fast at this point in the race. Uh, I was catching, you know, the midfield runners by at least a second a lap every time. We got the inside of this guy, Ruff McBird, um, and he gives me a massive squeeze through the S's there. I don't know why, because it's it's a position... It's P, We're fighting for P16, and... Yeah, he feels like he needs to defend like it's for the World Championship. I leave him space on the inside. He hits me wide before the um, apex even starts there in the middle part. And, and again, he spins himself out there. So I think there might have been a steward's inquiry for me there as well. Honestly, I don't know what it is with these guys in this league. But you need to be smarter. Like You need to know who you're racing. Um, and Ruff McBird was not racing me. I just set the fast up of the Grand Prix. He was on old ultra soft tires. It was obvious I was going to overtake him. But I don't know. People, it's just, it's a bit weird. But anyway, now we've got all the midfield runners coming out of the pits. Um, we're on uh, the same compound of tire. We go around the outside of it's that Matt 039. Um, he runs a little bit wide through turn one. We mount the curb to give him as much space as possible. And I think he even spun off my car as well. Um, I'm not too sure what happened there. Again, like, it's just a case of people not really leaving too much space. Speaking of not leaving space, there goes Ginger Horizon, a dive bomb up the inside after one bad run out of the S's. And at that point, you can see I was fed up. Fed up of no one wanting to leave space in that Grand Prix. It was absolutely <sighs> stupid. But... You know, two minutes later, I, you know, I cooled down. I didn't want to quit the race. It was kind of just like a, a knee-jerk reaction. I wanted to keep going, and so I joined back in the session, and I kept going. Um, I got front wing damage from that. It took me like two or three laps to get back in the race. And by that point, I was like a lap down, maybe two laps down. And my AI car was driving around with a broken front wing, which, you know, obviously it didn't help my chances of getting, getting back in the race. and. Um, yeah, I just couldn't believe it in pit to uh, change the front wing for me. But uh, yeah, we finally do that. We're in 17th place. Probably no chance of gaining any more positions in this race. So I thought, okay, let's just have a blast. See if we can set as, as many fast laps as we can. We were catching the cars in front by uh, at least a second a lap, maybe a second and a half. We catch up to Roscoe Arm. Uh, we're going to attempt to overtake him if we can. Rich Rev's DRS is open. But, uh, yeah, going back to that Ginger Horizon incident, like, I'm not a backmarker. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm me. I'm, tier, you know, I'm supposed to be a front runner. I don't know why he was so desperate to get in front of me. He could have just followed me through. But, no, he had to be really impatient and dive on me at the very first opportunity. 
which I found to be really, really annoying. People need to realize who they're racing and just think about the race a little bit better because at the moment these kids are just so desperate to either hold on to position or gain position at just about any opportunity. But um, yeah, we catch up the Poms, we overtake Roscoe Arm, we're arguably the fastest car on the grid. And um, as soon as we overtake Poms here, this is where the first glitch of this episode happens. Uh, we overtake him, and then for whatever reason, I feel like in my mind, the McLaren Honda goes back to realistic car performance, because like I said, I was the fastest car in the field, pretty much, setting 17s. You can see my fastest up there is a 1 minute 17.9. We overtake Poms, and now all of a sudden, we get this absolute wall of understeer. I cannot drive the car, I cannot keep the car on the track, I'm struggling. Look at that, I can't even negotiate the S's. And when you look at the Delta here, look at how slow we are. Two and a half seconds off the pace in the first two sectors. I don't know what's going on. And then here goes Poms, re-overtaking me, back up the inside. 3.3 seconds off the pace. Where is this time come from? Where, where is this time loss gone? I, I, I am so bewildered as to what has happened so instantaneously after overtaking Poms. I, I'm, this race had me so tilted. I have not seen so much bullcrap in my life. Um, all the incidents rejoining now and being four or five seconds off the pace now. I now have clear air. I'm getting on with my race. And tire wear isn't an issue. I don't have damage. But look at the Delta. Three seconds slower. We cross the line. Almost five seconds slower. Like, I was in the party with, with Ryan and Warden, and I was telling them what was happening. I was laughing. I was laughing. I... It was laughable how slow I instantly became, and I could do absolutely nothing. Uh, Owens overtook me there in a straight line like I was not even moving. I honestly think I have the 20, 2017 car performance of the McLaren, whereas everyone else was fine. They were unaffected. 3.3 seconds slower on this lap and I can't make corners anymore. Tire wear isn't an issue like I said. I have no damage. I'm running in rich revs like you can see there um, and just look at the way I'm driving. Like I'm not lifting and coasting. I'm hitting apexes for the most part but just the pace was nowhere. It was really weird. Really really weird. So that was glitch number one. Um, you can see I'm getting overtaken by cars left, right, and center. It, it is literally like I'm in the Salva or something, and everyone else is just flying past me. It feels like the first season of career mode again. It was, it was so funny. It, I, it didn't matter because the race was over. Um, but it, yeah, it's just such a weird thing to happen. You'll see glitch number two in a minute. I, I do clock onto that. We have someone going up our inside there in the Ferrari. That's Owens. We let him go. I decide to pit onto ultra soft tyres to see if that might fix the issue. You can see no changing in the front wing um, so the pace should only be an improvement by maybe 6 or 7 tenths uh, and you see that right there I don't have any engine wear to the car. Um, no gearbox wear, no MGUK, nothing. It's all 0% so that's glitch number 2. No, no engine wear. I don't know why that was a thing. We finally um, show some pace, we do a 17-2 on the ultra soft tyres, so you see that we didn't change anything, the only thing we changed was the tyres, and the tyres weren't even that bad for the tyre wear, so all of a sudden that was fixed, then I clock onto the issue that I don't have corner cutting rules on. There were a few like corners in the previous laps where I thought I should have got a corner cutting warning there, and then on this lap here you can see I'm absolutely taking the piss. I turn left at the stadium section, nothing, no warning, no penalty, and this is strict corner cutting rules. And that's glitch number three. So, I don't know what was going on in this race. Everything had completely gone to crap. Um, people, you know, squeezing me off. Then the five second loss in performance randomly in the middle of the race. No engine wear. And then corner cutting was turned off for me. What a fantastic game. What an absolutely fantastic game. This, um... League race right here is what it was the final straw for me to make that video about F1 2018 online. We need to do better. Look at everyone with all their penalties. Uh, Mexico is a really bad track for 
for track limits and we're the only one in the field with no corner cutting warnings. And I actually feel like that corner cutting warning glitch for me was probably present at the start of the race because there were a few moments where I ran wide here and there and I felt like I should have got a warning but I didn't. So I'll send this one off to Codemasters, see what they think. Um, that was just absolutely incredible. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, leave a like if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to see plenty more F1 2017 content. Um, hopefully in future races now in league racing we can get the luck back on our side. Uh, it's just been a, a horrible run for us in the last couple of weeks, but we'll see how we go. Um, hopefully things change. <laughs>